Once your player has mastered the power V drill, what we're going to do is we're going to have them finish the swing. Now, what I teach here at Parker Training is I teach a top hand release, and, I, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. The top hand release occurs after the power V. So you drive to your V, you snap your bat head towards the pitcher's head. At this point right here, we're going to continue to let that bat head work around our body in the exact same plane that we started on, right in here. Now, the reason I like the top hand release is simple. It takes the top hand out of the picture, it takes it out of the, of the equation. If I was to turn the contact point, push through to my V, and let that bat head continue, I'm keeping that bat head on the exact same orbit all the way around my swing. I'm going to be able to catch pitches that I may not be timed very well out here because I'm pushing through to a V and I'm getting long. A lot of problems occur in the top hand. What happens is that players will get short to the ball here, but at this point right in here, the top hand will start to roll and they will shift that bat head from one plane to the next and a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see the ball just kind of dribbling and hit the top of the ball and they just kind of nub it and they dribble it out. So top hand release drill. And as you do this, make sure push to the V and release. It's at this point right in here. Make sure that they're not releasing the top hand early. That's why it's, it's, it's vital that you put the time and effort into training the V. Push to the V, make sure that they are working the V. Then, once they are comfortable working the power of V, then you can go to a full cut. With the top hand release, what we do here is we eliminate the wrist roll or the potential of wrist roll. And so we add to the power V. And simply, once a player pushes through to the V, they just let the top hand go. They just let go of the top hand and let the back continue to carry around the body. So you can do this off of the tee, you can do it off of live motion, you can do it off dry cuts. Um, there's a variety of different ways you can introduce it, but getting them the reps and getting them to work on their top hand release with motion is the goal. So as we go through this, here's a top hand release and this is exactly what we're talking about. We have a load, we have a stride, we have a strong push to the V. Now right at the V, you're going to see she's going to release that top hand. And she's going to let the back continue to carry around her body. This is what we work on right in here. That top hand release, she's strong through it. There's no wrist roll whatsoever. She does a great job of pushing through to the V. At the V, we release and let the bat work around in the same orbit, in the same path that it was on. Wherever we started on, we want to continue that orbit around our body. So we're down in here, it's going to work around our body through the ball, and it's nice and controlled. This just is, it does wonders with cleaning up a hitter's swing. And the only thing that you really have to work on is that they don't release early. You don't want them releasing. See how she still has a hold of that bat? She still has a hold of it. She pushes through to her V. Then there's a top hand release. She just lets the momentum carry around her body. Because we designed the system in a scaffolding manner and they push to the V, if you train them and you take them through the steps, having them do a top hand release is not going to be any big deal. They're not going to be releasing early because you've worked on pushing to the V in this drill right here. Contact, short to the ball beautiful contact point. She has weight transfer. You can see your back foot. See the back foot's light in here? Right there. You can see how light she is. Turns to contact. She's level. She's turning behind it. Makes contact. Lets it get in nice and deep. Pushes through. The bat head snaps to her V. She releases with the top hand and she lets the bat head work smoothly around her body. Nice and controlled. Bang. 
So the top hand release, like I said, every one of my kids, all of the players that I have, I teach a top hand release. And it is definitely something that requires some training. But if you are using my system, it's a natural motion just to let that top hand go. Some players will naturally have a top hand release, but make sure they're not releasing early. We don't want that bat head being released here as you're pushing through. You don't want to release early. You don't want to let go. You want to brace at contact. You want to push through, get extension, get nice and long, and then you can release and let the bat carry the same plane that it was started on. Step and turn. And the more energy we get moving into our stride, we drive our stride forward. Once that weight gets into that front side, we're exploding and that energy that is behind the ball is immense. You've got all the energy in your body turning through the contact point. Nice and clean nice and long, nice and smooth. The other piece that will be really important is with the top hand release, it, it is an effective way to really extend um, your, your hitting area, especially when we start working on the outside half of the plate. In the videos that you'll see us working on um, on the outside pitch, and the top hand release and how we can pick up six to eight inches off of the plate um, without a whole lot of difficulty at all. So there you have it. There's the top hand release and what we do is now that you have them in um, full cuts, they're taking their full cuts, start working on distance away from them, velocity away from them, and let them work on their rhythm, tempo, and timing, their timing step, making sure that they are going into their heel drop at the right time. You go into their heel drop, they turn, and the bat work around their body. If you have a player that's opening up early, and you'll, you know, this is a question I get and a comment I get. Coaches will say, well, these mechanics, they force players to open up too early. Well, a player only opens up too early if they go into their heel drop too early. So as it's it's not about opening up too early. It's about going into your heel drop too early. So if a player is opening up early, that's because they are early with their stride step. So they have to learn to hover that stride step. They have to hover that foot, hover it, hover it, hover it. As the ball reaches the plate and it's out in front of them about six to eight feet, they're going into their heel drop. And this short part of the swing happens so fast and it has so much velocity that it's a split second in there to the ball and then they get long and it looks like a nice effortless swing and that's what we're after nice and controlled smooth strokes top hand release